Hi, I'm Glenn from Plumbing Parts Plus in West Dallas, Wisconsin. I'm here today to try to show you how to get your Kohler faucet rebuilt or back to working condition. It's a Kohler Niedekin assembly. It's an old system that's used from the early 20s into the 60s and prior to that with another design there was an older design that was also used. Very durable unit, um, very easily fixed with the right tools. Um, as long as your shower walls and things are in good shape it's a very w good way to solve your problem by just rebuilding this particular faucet. We start by disassembling the unit, showing you how to go about how to about get the unit out. Most of the things have to be done by a service person to fix this. Uh, requires some special tools. Uh, some companies will give you a full rebuild that you can put back into your wall. But one way or another you can get this back to working condition. We we'll start by dismantling what we have here. The screw handle comes off. Everything I'm taking apart is going to come off a little bit easier than what you're going to see, but this is just a wedge shape down here. Sometimes give it a tap. This will pull off. Go after your plate. You want to make sure you turn your water off before you do this. And if you can, you can somewhere go downstairs and turn your stationary tub on and get the system purged a little bit so you don't have water all over the floor. You'll also find in some cases this valve is in the wall a little bit. You might stuff a rag and I'll show you just so you don't lose your screws in the wall. Well, ultimately what we're looking for is this assembly right here. I'm talking about just making a rag in the wall so these screws don't fall in. This doesn't always come off this easy and if it doesn't come off, bring it in with that on there. We can get it off for you or replace it. We're going after is a bad yolk inside of here. It's, what happens after a period of time, this assembly will just wear just from constant in and out. And because of the material that was used at the time, the nature of the beast. After we get these all out, this whole piece will pull out. And we'll show you what the worn piece looks like and what we need to do to get it back to the new. Again, because this is an older unit and this hasn't been installed for a while, yours might come out a little bit harder than what you're seeing here, but this will ultimately just pull out. This is what we're looking to repair. What happens after a period of time is that this spiral inside of here, the yoke assembly, and the spiral and stem become so worn that the tolerances don't allow it to pull in and out properly and keep your temperature the way it should and shut off the way it should. This is where you have to almost stop what you're doing and bring this down for somebody to work on. What has to happen is we call it recoring it. What we're going to show you how to do is I'm going to take this apart, reuse this faceplate, which saves you about $100. We're going to end up getting you a, a new yoke. This is an older style, the stationary uh, pins on it. The new yoke has got floating set, uh, ports on it that allow it to seal easier, but uh, accomplish the same thing. But before we go any further, I'd like to show inside of here. There's two seats, and you just want to take a look at them. And normally, what happens is they get a little nick or some rust or some things on those things. They can be replaced, and it's done with an 11 16 socket. Um, normally, if you have a deep well socket, it's a little, a little bit easier. But a normal socket like this will go in there. And what we're looking to do is get those out of there so we can change those. Purposely scarred this one up to show you what can happen. We've got a little nick in here. What we're looking for is a tight seal between the seat and the plunger assembly here. That's where your water is shut off. This is also how your water is tempered. You look how these are fluted as this thing just pulled in and out of this unit. If we start out there in the cold off position, as this thing starts getting pulled back, your cold water is allowed in, cold water is allowed out. Just the opposite on the hot side. Hot side is being blocked until you get a little further out. Now your hot's allowed in and your cold has been blocked at the end. That's where your mixture comes from. It's also what this is about on top of here. Say if you had elderly or children in the house, you could actually set that so it can't be pulled back too far so they, could, they can't be sculled. 
pretty innovative for the time. Also, when you're looking at the seat, you pull these out, you want to make sure you get these leveling washers off of both units. When you put them back in, you want them both on the units also then. A little Teflon tape or a little Teflon paste is also recommended. And make sure you get a positive seal on those. When you put everything back in, you don't want any leaks. So, putting the seat back in, same thing we did with that. Just I just happen to have a cheater tool here that we've had for a long time. It's one made by Kohler. Just a basically 11 16 socket with a deep well. I'm just going to screw that back into the housing. Just snug that down. You can put a pliers on here just to snug it down, make sure it's nice and tight. That's pretty much all I can do with that. Now it comes to rebuilding this. Okay, what would happen is you bring it into, uh, you can bring it to our store, but there are other places that probably would do this. Uh, what we do is we take it to about 10, 10 to 15 minute job. Average cost of something like this, we've bought seats and a new stem in New York is about $120 to repair. What starts off with is just a packing nut comes off. Inside there's a packing we have to pull out. And just showing you what's, because again, these are all been worked on. A lot of times in a vise, we'll have to put these in there because these are so tight that getting these off of here is not as easy as I'm showing you here. So this is set up in a vise where we're able to go at them. Um, inside that here, we talked about that packing. This is an older style packing in here also. It's got fiber in it. And as a matter of just, we go about pulling this out. To give us access to this bushing inside that allows us to get this stem out of here. Another specialty tool. What that does, it goes on to these two grooves that are inside of that piece, allows us to pull this out and you get rid of your bad parts. Those are what was causing your problem. This here no longer doing its job. So along with that, we come back and we're looking for a new stem. And we talked about before the new yoke. Okay, the spiral on her now is going to give you that positive stop you're looking for. And we put that back in. Same way we did using this because, like I said, this doesn't go bad too often. This goes back in. And we have a new bushing. And I can tighten down. Snug that down. Once we got that snug down, we have to add the packing back into it. Just a graphite packing now that gets placed inside the unit. The packing nut goes back in. It gets compressed down in it. And just snug this down just a little bit. Maybe we reset this later on. And add our cap gasket to this. And our new yoke. Now we're back to the tolerance. There's no wobble. Back to brand. Talked about before is with the, how these are fluted is how that goes back on the wall. The round is your cold, your square is your hot. In a shower and tub application, this is up, this is down. If you had just a shower only, okay, we reverse this. We put this down, this up, and we reverse the two pieces. Always cold on the on the right, hot on the left, and that gets put back on the wall. You can pull in here and look at this, how this is built here. There's a little shelf inside of here. I got another sample here I can show you. You see here is a little indentation here. That dictates how that goes back in there. It's going to go opposite of this bale right there. So in a shower application only, that's what we talked about, that would be up and this would be down. All right, well, we're going to put it back in the unit we have here. This is the tub and shower setup. So we're going to flip it back around. We're going to have that back up. That down, put this around. All right, and it's going to move back in just the way I got it. This is the way we're going to hand it back to you when it's all done. We're going to instruct you to go home with this. And we're going to tell you a few things that to do exactly what I talked about before with the hot on the left, cold on the right, this up, this down. That's the only thing we're going to tell you about until we get you after the water's back on. It's going to slide back into your pod. All right, we're going to put your four screws back in. All snug down a little bit here. Be the time we go back and put the water back on. Get these snug down. Kind of go in a crossing pattern.
Okay, once those are down like so, just put your handle on. We know we told you how we put it in there. We had it in an open position. We want that in an open position. We put it back on now. First thing we're going to do is going to go back downstairs, turn the water back on. The water should be pouring out of your spout here now. We want to check the leaks around here and especially here now. That new packing has to be set. So as your water's running, water should be trickling out of here. In a little by little, just a little finesse type thing. You got to take that nut and just pack it down little by little by little till it stops. You don't want to become aggressive and tighten it too tight because this may become too hard to turn. Now it's just a matter of redressing it back up. Putting your tube back on, your plate back on, your handle back on, and that's back to brand new that'll last you another 30 years. Besides recording the unit, there is another way to go about it. A lot of places will offer a whole complete replacement parts that I talked about before. A new plate, a new stop, and all the pieces to get it back to new. So you can't use your old plate. And what they would offer you is the ability to just take all new parts. Same scenario when you're done. Put your packing back in, they'd hand it to you with these parts now, all brand new, just to take home. The only problem with this is it's actually about $120 for all these parts. And like I say, for the most part, you don't ever have to re, uh, replace this. This doesn't go bad unless these were busted off or for some reason other than that. You would just take this home and do what I just exactly what I told you there. This would be an up position, down position, hot side, tub and shower. But like I said, if you're recording, it just saves you a few dollars. All right, here's another example. I mean, you bring this piece in, you tell me that your faucet is dripping now. All right, so we can take a look at this. You look at this worm gear, you look at this worm gear, it's not in that bad of a shape. So what we do with this is we just normally replace a couple washers and you always want to replace this cap gasket that's on these units. These just pull off and new cap gaskets put on. But this is done this way. If these plungers come off, you want to do these one at a time. Okay, with the difference because this is the thread on here and the thread on the base are different from hot to cold. And these just thread off. The washer gets pulled out. All right, and the new washer gets put back in. You snug those down. Same thing on the cold side. Just repeat the procedure. Again, the washer gets put back in, and that's ready to be back into your old yoke and your old stem assembly. Also, want to notice why I got them here. There's a couple different lengths of stems. Um, take a look here. There's about a 5 eighths of an inch difference over the years as it changed depending on how they were roughed into the wall but the, the, rec of the rest of the mechanism works the same way. With this you'd go back, do the same thing we talked about before, up, down, round, square, hot, hot and cold, back into the wall in the same way, unit all the way open, back into the pod, screws back in, and you shouldn't have to touch your packing on that because that hasn't been taken out. But it's because it has been disturbed in some cases, you just tighten this down until it stops coming out of there. Okay, I just want to kind of wrap up. I also mentioned a few other things. Uh, there is an older style yoke assembly that's about twice the size of this. And the housing is, is considerably larger. Um, not as many seen around, but they are still out there. I um, also want to mention on here that there is a couple other different types of plates and handles. Um, the other plate is a much larger, about the size of this mark on here, with a longer handle, but they have the identical me uh, mechanism on the inside. Uh, one other kind of handle design, but you'll see this mechanism and how it turns is very, very recognizable. That's about it. Hope that helps you with everything we've tried to get across on fixing an old Kohler Nidekin. Um You can get a hold of us at uh, pppmilwaukee.com, and I'm Glenn from Plumbing Parts Plus. 
Best dollars, Wisconsin. Thanks.